Hi, everyone. Um, welcome. I hope you're all having a great first day of Dreamforce as we're kind of wrapping up the afternoon here. Um, Hello and welcome to Experience Cloud Sites with Lightning Web Runtime, what developers should know. My name is Nathan Minchow. I am a senior UI developer at Silverline, a top Salesforce consulting partner focused in healthcare, financial services, and media and entertainment. And as a UI developer, I spend a lot of my time in Experience Cloud. So I'm really excited to talk about it with you all here today and some of the latest developments going on there. And as I get started, I first want us all just to imagine a hopefully easy scenario for a second. Let's say that your company is attending a big tech conference, maybe in San Francisco, and uh, you need to create an event website where people can find your company, find the goings on, maybe where you'll be, where you'll be hosting sessions, maybe a contact form to capture user interest and messages. And with a site like that, you have a few caveats you need to consider. First, it has totally custom style and branding, right? No SLDS styles. It's really wholly your company's styles. It might need to integrate some kind of third-party analytics library for things like marketing purposes. And perhaps most importantly, it needs to be capital F fast because people who are trying to access this site might be at a conference, might have limited data, they might not have the greatest internet possible, and so the smaller your site is, the more performant it is, the easier it'll be for them to find you, which could lead to more engagement. So what if I told you that you could build a site like this on Experience Cloud, leveraging the full power of the Salesforce platform and still fit into some of these caveats I've outlined here. That is where Lightning Web Runtime Sites for Experience Cloud come in, the modern, performant way to build and host Experience Cloud Sites. That's not the official tagline for LWR. I just think it sounds nice. So today, we're going to talk about Lightning Web Runtime. We'll introduce what it is as a whole. We'll discuss what's new with the framework compared to the Experience Cloud sites we're used to in the past and what you need to know as a developer to work on the platform. And lastly, we'll discuss what you can learn or how to learn more about it and some key resources that'll be useful if you're interested in continuing to learn about the platform. So what is Lightning Web Runtime? Well, to answer that, let's first talk a little bit about the frameworks and the technologies that we use in Experience Cloud. So if you're a front-end developer um, on Salesforce, you're probably familiar with two primary technologies we use to build components. Lightning Web Components, or LWC, and Aura, the framework that came before. Now, up until fairly recently, if you were building an Experience Cloud site, you were building it on an Aura-based foundation. That means at the very top level of your Experience Cloud site, you're running it really in an Aura container. And all of your subcomponents inside of that were either nested Aura components or Lightning Web components. So we had this sort of like inter-framework communication going on. Lightning Web Runtime is a pretty marked difference uh, compared to those older sites because they are based purely on a Lightning Web component foundation. This means that your top-level component, as well as all nested components on your site, are based on Lightning Web Components. This is the most important thing to know as a developer, because that means if you have a whole library of Aura components, or you rely on a lot of maybe managed packages or integrations that rely on Aura components, they won't be compatible with Lightning Web Runtime out of the box. But that, not, that might not be as bad as you think, because Lightning Web Runtime really represents sort of the future of Experience Cloud, with a focus on two primary things. The first, performance. I already mentioned that it's fast, but how it works really is it takes your Lightning Web components and serves them statically at runtime over the Salesforce CDN, which helps deliver unparalleled performance when users try to access your site. It's also focused on developer productivity. Right, That one single framework with LWC really kind of lowers the overhead for devs interested in working on it. And it also comes with a host of new features to sort of enable developers, including an updated deploy and publish model. 
Creating an LWR site is pretty easy. It follows the process you're used to. You simply navigate to all sites in our digital experiences and Salesforce setup, click that handy new button, and then choose a template with LWR in the title, and you are off to the races. So, what's new? What do you need to know if you're maybe coming from an Aura background or you've just never used it before? What's new with LWR? Well, the biggest thing I think to know is that publishing changes work a little bit differently in Lightning Web Runtime than what we're used to. So let's take a look at that together. So you can see here I've got a Lightning Web Runtime site loaded up in Experience Builder. At the top of this site, I have just a basic HTML component, a couple lines of text, nothing too fancy. And below that, I have a column component. And inside of that, I have three instances of this card component I created called Highlight Card. If I open up that component, you can see I have three properties defined on it. I have a title, a description, and a background color. If you look at the component, you can see I've got the title there, the background color. It's all rendering as you would expect. But the description is, is missing. It's not there. There is something wrong. We'll get to it in a sec. Um, so that's my Experience Builder site. I also have the published live version of that Lightning Web Runtime site here. And for demo's sake, I've also recreated this site in Aura. So I have my Experience Cloud version, and I have my live published Aura version. So that description is still missing right across all of these. And we're developers. We like to fix bugs. Um, so let's jump into VS Code and see if we can figure out what's wrong here. OK, I see what's wrong here. Um, my description is commented out. Someone was lazy. Someone forgot to uncomment it. Whatever. I'm going to go ahead and uncomment that description in my template. I'll save my changes. I'll deploy it back up to my org. All right, so that should have fixed the issue. Let's jump back to our live Aura site and see if it's pulling that description like we would expect it to. OK, I've got lines of text showing under all the cards. Everything is good. We fixed the issue as you would have expected to. Not the most complicated fix ever. If I refresh my Lightning Web Runtime site, though, you'll see that nothing shows up below. So this is the big difference in the publishing model I want to highlight here. And that is something that I already alluded to before. But Lightning Web Runtime freezes your components when they are published and serves them statically at runtime. This means, and this is by design, right? So this means that, that those components can be served more quickly and more efficiently. But it also means that until you actually publish those changes, you're not going to see any component updates until you've actually published them from Experience Builder. Now, if I reload my Lightning Web Runtime site in Experience Builder, you'll see that it actually does retrieve that updated component successfully. And that's because Experience Builder does load components dynamically, but the published site, since it's optimized for end users, is going to statically serve them. So I'm going to go ahead and publish so we can actually verify that we fixed this on our live site. I'll wait for that to finish, and then Hopefully, fingers crossed, if I jump back over to my published site and refresh the page, you'll see that description text there. This is the biggest change that um, has actually tripped up most of the developers I've worked with. This is the thing I've had to have, like, spend a whole day trying to like, figure this out. I'm like, just publish it again. It's not, it's not too bad. <laughs> um, so as a summary, Lightning Web Components on Lightning Web Runtime are frozen when your site is published and serves statically. So your deployed component changes won't be reflected until it's published again. And my developer pro tip is really just to set up a test page inside of Experience Builder that you can just use to quickly reload and check your component changes as you're developing. So Lightning Web Runtime, in addition to that publishing model change, has a lot of emphasis on custom code, right? If you compare the sort of component list you get in Experience Builder by default on an Aura site, you'll see I have components for things like you know, sales, um, support, um, kind of these customized and opinionated workflows these components all are designed to help solve specific work or use cases for. The LWR component list, by comparison, is a lot more focused on site layout, right? Things like columns, 
overlays, cards, and it's really designed with an emphasis on enabling you as a developer to go in and sort of fill up your site um, with components that you can create for those use cases instead. And it wouldn't be worth doing all of that work, right, if LWR didn't give you granular control over your site. And that starts at the very top of the list with head markup, right? At the very top of your site, if you, say, need to remove SLDS for your company micro site for a big tech conference, you can simply jump into the head markup and remove any lines you don't need, which is different than Aura, which sort of gave you and saddled you with a decent amount to start with, which helps you sort of optimize your site if you need it to be smaller and more performant. Another really cool um, new feature in LWR that I like as a UI developer are DXP styling hooks. This is a reduced set of CSS custom properties or CSS variables that are designed to let, that, are, that allow your site to use a consistent set of branding that actually maps to some of the theme properties that you'll see inside of Experience Builder and also are exposed inside of your code for reuse. Um, let's take a quick look at DXB styling hooks in action. So you might recall I have my, my cards here all created. Um, they have those same properties, one of them being a background color. And while I can you know, change the background color here, and that's nice, and that's fun, it would actually be really cool, right, if I could set a brand for my entire Experience Cloud site and have these cards that we just hook into that, right? And then my admins, if they wanted to, could update that from inside of Experience Builder and change all of my components across my site with a consistent branding color. Well, I have a brand color and a brand foreground color defined inside of here. So let's see if we can actually do this with DXB styling hooks. If I switch over to the Salesforce documentation for Lightning Web Runtime Sites, there's a section specifically for DXB styling hooks. And under that, you can see I have a hook defined for brand and for brand contrast. So these would be perfect ones for us to use maybe for these cards for, say, the background color and the actual text color, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to my code editor, and I'm going to open up the CSS for this highlight card component, nothing too crazy. And I'm going to replace some of these properties with these styling hooks to leverage that, that power. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to duplicate my background color. I'm going to start a CSS variable declaration, and I'm going to go grab that styling hook from the Salesforce documentation. I'll paste it in here, and I'll go ahead and add that existing color as a fallback, just in case that variable isn't defined um, when the CSS is accessed. And for demo's sake, I've already defined the one for text. So we'll go ahead and update that code as well. I'll do a quick hop over to my JavaScript to uh, uncomment or to comment my line that sets the code um, for the inline attribute as opposed to the um, styling hook approach we're using here. I'll deploy the source to my org. Great, that ran. Let's switch back over to our experience builder, not to our live site, and reload it to actually see that change. And as you can see, my card is now hooked in to those theme properties I've already defined. And if I open that up, you'll see that I can adjust that brand color, and it'll actually update all of those cards consistently. And the cool thing about DXB styling hooks is that they actually have more than things than just color. There's also styling hooks for text. There's styling hooks for sizing and spacing. So they really allow us some granular control and allow us to enable admins to make pretty, like, pretty widespread changes to our experience cloud sites. There's a whole bevy of other features I would love to talk to you all about with Lightning Web Runtime. I have 20 minutes. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blaze through a few of them here. But custom URL paths is a big one for me, at least. No more slash s and all experience cloud sites. That's pretty exciting. Lightning Web Security. I could, I could give a whole talk on Lightning Web Security. But just know that it's sort of the evolution of Lightning Locker Service. And it's enabled for Lightning Web Runtime sites by default. So that gives you advantages like cross namespace components, global attribute access for like third party library integrations, and a bunch more. Lightning Web Runtime also introduces um, some, some really great accessibility features. 
um, including F6 navigation. Um, a lot of the default page layouts inside of Lightning Web Runtime have F6 headers or F6 attributes defined automatically, which allow users to quickly switch between different tabs of their site. It also has a native screen reader page update announcement. So when users click navigational links inside of their sites, it'll actually announce those changes to any users who are utilizing a screen reader, which is really great to have on by default. OK. I've talked a lot. <laughs> I've covered a lot of information. And I've really only scratched the surface here. So where can you go to learn more about Lightning Web Runtime um, and keep up to date as Salesforce continues to release updates to the framework? Well, first, um, if you are interested in anything that I've talked about or want to find any of these resources, go ahead and scan this QR code. It links to a post that I made on the Trailblazer community. It has links to every resource I'm about to lay out here over the next few slides. And after today, I'll also update it with some of this slide content so you all can check it out and um, see everything that I have talked about here today. So the first thing I'll recommend, developer documentation. We're devs. Um, Check out the Lightning Web Runtime sites for Experience Cloud documentation. It covers practically everything I've talked about here. But also check out Lightning Web Components and the Experience Cloud Developer Guide um, for really a holistic view and overview of everything that I've talked about here today. I mentioned before that Lightning Web Runtime sites sort of have a limited um, base component selection. But that doesn't mean there aren't places you can find some. I highly recommend checking out the Experience Cloud LWR apps site. It's a curated list of open source components from Salesforce employees um, that replicate a lot of kind of common patterns and common use cases. So definitely check that out if you want to kickstart your Lightning Web Runtime site build. Salesforce also includes a handy list of code samples for a lot of common patterns, things like navigation menus. So definitely check those out too. If you prefer a more guided approach to your learning, I highly, highly recommend the How to Build LWR Sites with Experience Cloud video series and the Lightning Web Runtime for Experience Cloud Trailhead modules. They cover a lot of what I've talked about here and really get into the detail and kind of guide you through everything I've talked about here today. So to sum this up, um, Lightning Web Runtime is the newest and latest Experience Cloud framework. It's built entirely with LWC, and it comes with a host of new features, including an updated publishing model, DXB styling hooks, and a whole host of other features that you might, uh, might be interested in. So please, if you are interested, if I've piqued your interest, please, please check out the linked resources um, on the earlier slides to stay up to date on all things Lightning Web Runtime. That is everything I have prepared for you all today. Thank you all for listening. And please, please, please provide your feedback. That's how we improve. That's how we get better. That's how we know what worked and didn't work. So please, please provide your feedback. And who knows, you might win a free pass to Dreamforce next year. Thank you all. <laughs>